Hello folks, this is Jamil Surf of Gunstroke Reviews. We're here at the Caltan USA range in Peoria, Arizona with my friend Freddie Blish. How you doing, Freddie? Hey, Jamil. How are you doing? Well, Freddie, again, uh, to describe him, also an instructor at Gunsight Academy. Correct. He's been doing that for several years. Um, now, Freddie, explain to me how we're going to teach malfunction clearances with a carbine like this 308 St. Victor. Well, you know, uh, sometimes what you'll hear is people refer to as my gun jammed. Well, as we know, jam is something that we put on our toast. It doesn't describe whether it's a malfunction or a stoppage. Uh, I wrote an article for our uh, blog site, Robar's blog site, entitled Jam is something I put on my toast. And I, I go through the eight cycles of operation for semi-automatic pistols, describe uh, what those cycles are and then where malfunctions or stoppages incur what they are in you know but what we're going to talk about today is how we can immediately rectify either a malfunction or a stoppage and in in the military parlance stoppage is a uh, nomenclature for something that we can fix ourselves immediately in the field a malfunction requires tools okay Unfortunately, in the civilian industry, in the training industry, they've kind of mixed the two terms up and they, they refer to as a malfunction, something that we can, you know, perform uh, immediate or remedial action. Um, so for the sake of just continuity with what's going on in the civilian industry, uh, we'll use the terms malfunction. Uh, type one malfunction is a failure to feed or a failure to fire, meaning you're gonna get a click when you're expecting a bang. Mm -hmm. A type two malfunction would be a failure to properly eject all the way out where we have a uh, round that is partially ejected from uh, the um, ejection port. And then a type three malfunction could either be a failure to extract or two live rounds trying to feed, also known as a double feed. And uh, then the last one that we'll do a quick demo on is a bolt over, or we like to refer to sometimes as a type eight, meaning that, you know, your day just got ate up because you've got a malfunction that is uh, uh, kind of out of the ordinary and often will occur while you're clearing a type three malfunction. So for the first malfunction, the type three malfunction, let's, let's talk about that. Failure to feed, failure to fire. Um, either the magazine wasn't seated fully and the bolt when went forward uh, missed the, or went over the round and mm -hmm. it did not chamber around. Or you had a round that had a bad primer or just something a lot, uh, uh, cause the round not to fire. Okay. And so what is, you know, how do we solve that problem? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, we'll set this up. I'm gonna let the bolt go forward. So I've got an empty chamber to simulate uh, this problem. So I'm gonna push, pull to make sure the magazine is seated. Uh, I've got that in there. Uh, I'm gonna bring the gun up. I'm gonna feel, you know, hear, hear that loud sign of gunfight, that click. And what I wanna do is I want to push, pull again, make sure the magazine's seated. If you have to, you can tuck it under your armpit so that way that some people, this requires a lot of upper body strength and if they, they go to push, you know, they're pushing the gun up and then it's pull, or they're, and they go to pull it down, well, they're not controlling the muzzle and you may have a safety issue, but you know, if you can hold it in your shoulder, push, pull, that's great. Uh, if you have to kind of tuck it underneath, that's okay too. So push, pull, roll, Rack, and then you're back in the fight. Great. Push, pull, roll, rack. Well, let me try it on with live ammo, of course. Yes. We got one round in the chamber there. We're gonna clear it. I'm gonna clear it out. And we're go I'm gonna try it at that target about 50 yards and see how it works. Let's do it. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is drop my bolt, and I'm gonna load it with a live round, a live magazine. Push, pull. Push, pull. Yep. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try it. Get that loudest sound in a gunfight. Which is click, oh no. So I'm gonna go push pull. Yep, and roll then, rack, roll it so that ejection port helps you. Yep, and rack and back in the fight. Back in the fight again, I'm gonna shoot one round. It worked. Gosh darn it. Too easy. Well, you know, for this next one, when we talk about type two malfunctions, which I mentioned before being a failure to, uh, go ahead and just leave that in there, leave the magazine in, and I'll set this up. Because the, the solution to solving this uh, is the same as uh, the type one malfunction. We're gonna push, pull, roll, rack. So again, we've had a failure uh, to go ahead and let that go come forward. 
we have had a failure uh, to eject. And uh, so we've got an empty case sticking out like that. And very simply, push, pull, roll, rack. You're gonna aim in. You're gonna feel that mushy trigger. There it is. Push, pull, roll, rack. Push, pull, roll, rack, and back in the fight. Okay, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Take safety off. Oh, nothing happened. Mushy trigger. Push, pull, roll, rack. Push, pull, roll, rack. Oh, did we set up a oh, type three malfunction? We set up we a did. type. Yeah. And what we have, and what's really great here is we actually have, what we had is a failure to extract and we have a live round trying to feed in there. So this is a type three malfunction, but this is a failure to extract. Hey, this is a great, what I like to call a teachable moment because we just created a type three malfunction, Yamil. So let me walk you through this and show you how to clear a type three malfunction. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so what we're gonna do, it's pretty simple. The way we solve this is just like the other ones where we we're feeling that mushy trigger, we push, pull, roll, rack, it doesn't solve the problem. So what I want to do then is I want to lock the bolt to the rear because I want to take pressure off of the magazine. I want to strip the magazine out. Okay, just rip it out of there. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my digits up inside of the magazine well to clear out any rounds that might be stuck in there. Now what I want to do is grab in the charger handle, let it go, and I'm going to rack it three times. That was one, two, three. I insert a fresh magazine, rack it, and I'm back in the fight. Awesome. Well, let's set it up again so I can do it. Okay, to set this up, uh, Jamel, it's really easy. We're gonna push pull that magazine in. Now what I'm gonna do is place this round right on top like this, keep it elevated like this. And now what I want you to do is just pull the charger handle back and, and have it go forward real slowly. Boom, look at that. And if you can zoom in here, you'll see this is actually a real double feed. This is a true double feed, uh, a type three malfunction because I have two live rounds competing for the same space. Okay. All right, now to clear this, aim in, feel the mushy trigger. All right, push, pull, roll, rack. So push, pull, roll, rack, let it go forward, solve the problem, finish it. Okay, sometimes we get lucky and that solves that problem. So, you know, where I didn't have to go through the entire uh, type three malfunction clearance. We'll set it up one more time. And this time we'll set it up in a way that will induce you to have to clear it, you know, the full malfunction clearance. Okay, now we're gonna set up this type three like uh, we had before where we had an empty case that was in the chamber. Yeah, All right, you I'm go. gonna put the magazine in. Okay, we're gonna let that bolt go forward gently. Just pull back the charging handle, let that go forward gently. There you go. All right. Yep, we got it. Okay, aim in. All right, here we go. Now, feel that mushy trigger. Now it's push, pull, roll, rack. That didn't solve the problem, so now what we want to do is lock the, the bolt to the rear, take pressure off the magazine, strip the magazine out. Strip it out, rip it out of there, Stick, yep, store it away, do what you gotta do. Now, wait, before we go further, uh, go ahead and take this hand, get your fingers up in there, dig it up, dig it in there, that's it. Make sure there's nothing loose in there. Now run the bolt three times. All right, insert a fresh magazine. Now back in the fight. Okay, just two things that I would comment on. One, you broke your master grip to run the charging handle. I advise against that. I, I recommend you always run with, with a, your- With a weak hand, okay. Exactly. And then the uh, other thing just, and I know you didn't notice it, but your viewers will, it was on the second time you pulled the bolt that they actually, that case ejected. Uh, the first time didn't do it, but the second one did, just like we mentioned with the handguns. You know, 50-50 chance the first time, about a 90% chance the second time. And the, the reason we go time. a third time is to get that last 10% that may have been stuck in there. Okay, Jamel, one more that we need to mention and we kind of mentioned earlier 
was the type eight as an ATE, meaning your day is just ate up because of this malfunction. And it's also referred to as the brass over bolt. And what we have here is we've got the a piece of brass that's stuck on the charging handle and the bolt stuck right in between there. And I had this actually had a customer come in. He had a type three malfunction. He didn't know how to clear it properly. And in the process of clearing it, he created this and he didn't know how to get it unstuck because what will happen is that the brass is stuck between the bolt and the charging handle. And every time you move the charging handle, it just travels with it. Okay. So the solution to this is actually really easy. All you've got to do is uh, on the bolt catch, press that on the bolt catch, lock that bolt to the rear, and it falls out. Oh, that's real too simple. simple. It used to be uh, that we were teaching people, you know, taking tools, knives, jamming in the ejection port to pull the bolt back to do the same thing. When uh, a real simple solution was, hey, just lock the bolt to the rear, chop the charging handle forward, and the brass would fall out. That's real perfect. simple. That's perfect. Well, Freddie, thank you for all your help with all these malfunctions on the carbine. I actually knew a couple, but I didn't know all of them. Yeah. And this is great information that our viewers are going to find very interesting, especially if they have any kind of modern sparring rifle like the Saint series, whether yes. in 5.56 or in 308. You know, the quality manufactured guns like this one, you rarely see those malfunctions, but anything by, made by man can have uh, problems and when they do it's nice to know that you can for the majority of them clear them on your own in the field and if you can't when you go to the gunsmith to be able to explain to them hey this is what's happening not just my gun jam but no it happened you know uh, during the feeding cycle or during the extraction cycle or during the ejection cycle that helps the gunsmith help you fix the gun and sometimes some of these malfunctions can be caused because of fouling yes because it gets, you shoot it a lot, you don't yes. clean it properly, yes. and this happens. Proper cleaning, proper uh, you know, oil or maintenance of, a, of the, especially these platforms, real important. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks for watching, and thanks, Freddie, for all your help. Thank you for watching Gunstock Reviews. Please visit our website at www.gunstockreviews.com for more exclusive content. Please visit our patron page at www.patron.com slash gunstockreviews. Your contributions would be greatly appreciated and help us grow our selections and frequency of videos.